വീഡിയോ കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ടോ പൈസ കാണുന്നുണ്ടോ പൈസ കാണുന്നില്ലേ എന്താ ഡിലേ കാരണമാണോ Greetings everyone, my name is Shashi Ishwin and I am an alumnus of Trishu Engineering College at LRGEC. I am an alumnus of the Brown Army and as a family, some of you will never be the land. So, fortunately for all of us, this is not a problem. This is about a person who in, in her short life has touched the lives of so many people. This is about the glory of the people, the glory of God. Both of us and alumnus of She and I were contemporaries in college at a age in the different streets of history. Uh, my memories of Bond during the college days were that of a very bright and sprightly girl in her teens. After graduating from college, um, she rather quickly moved to the United States to be with her husband, Krishna. She came from a thoroughly middle class background, just like most of us. Yet, uh, she rose through the ranks as to her academic brilliance. I'm sure you have worked in one of the most well-known companies in the Silicon Valley, the Intel Corporation. It was a few years later that I met Gloria Rashmo residents in Silicon Valley. It's not safe to be specific. But instantly I could recall Bobby Gloria from college streets. I felt an instant connection to the college for uh, her voice and her characteristic visual accent. A few of us felt more at home and broad. Thanks to all of the evening that Gloria hosted in her house for us. Gloria um, <laughs> lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, where she was the central point of many connections among GEC teams. She would walk into the room and immediately light up the roof, drive up the roof, regardless of whether our people can. She would engage everyone in conversation with a genuine passion and interest. It won't be much of a hyperbole to say that Gloria was the buying force of many military get-togethers of the GECT members. Even decades after leaving college, she held her fondness for the college so dearly that she had insisted that I join her in a fundraising campaign for building the college auditorium. Later, some friends of mine that had joined hands to form the GECT Development Trust. There are two Gloria was instrumental in rallying the troops and helping the GECT Development Trust and its various initiatives. <coughs> Sadly, uh, Gloria has left us too soon, but she has not left without making an impact. Just like she touched the lives of so many while she was alive. Her legacy lives through in, um, in college, thanks to the generosity of her husband, Krishnan, and kids, Sita, and Roy. The GECT Safe Scholarship and the LMA are uh, just two examples that remind us, uh, remind those, especially those who haven't met Gloria, that a John Ho person had once walked up and down the hand of all the of our college. Uh, so I, I hope I tried to convey to you what a remarkable person uh, Gloria was and how well liked. She was. And uh, it's not just the outward demeanor of her, but the innermost beauty of her, uh, you know, actions, so the, the caring and, uh, uh, and the ability to uh, engage everyone in a deep conversation. And then from the ability to recall those conversations, so they show that, that she genuinely cared about everybody. And I hope that is. something that we all can take with us uh, uh, from our uh, and, and, and that is one way to contribute. Uh, 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 that's pretty much
much all I can say at this point about Florian. I'm sure you do miss her, as I think many of our friends feel uh, uh, the same thing. Uh, as I say, it's going to be Gloria. Gloria Gopikumar Anna Lecture is handled by Dr. Priya Narayan. She is the Assistant Professor of Marketing at the Indian Institute of Management, Kolko. Her research focuses on how consumers process information, particularly brand information, and is published or under peer review at leading journals in marketing. She teaches graduate and executive courses in marketing management, strategic management, and digital management. Her, she earned a PhD in marketing from the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad as a winner of the Institute's World Best Dissertation Award. She holds an MBA from the IIM Ahmedabad, where she won Merit Scholarship awarded the top five persons of her class each year. She also holds a BTEC degree in electronic communication from Government and College Institute, winning first rank at university. Prior to her PhD, she was a strategy consultant at the Monster Group. She advises businesses on marketing strategy and has been part of plans that are startups for integration and activation. I invite Nan for the next Shall I begin? Uh, okay. So, a very good morning to all of you. Thank you all for uh, coming to attend this talk. So I am actually used to giving a very interactive kind of classes, discussions basically. I don't give lectures at all. I don't think I have given a single lecture as part of my uh, teaching. So uh, um, just want to say that uh, this is a new format for me because some at some point if I expect you people to talk, uh, just don't be surprised. So anyway, I will try and keep it like a monologue and maybe we can have a discussion after that. So the title of the talk as I have given is marketing real and ideal that is there are two forms of marketing possible and I would like to reflect on this based on strategy, psychology and technology. These are three themes that we can identify in marketing. So now firstly of course it's a nice pleasure. Thank you. 
actually talking about it in walking distance. So uh, we had a lot of very sweet memories of uh, telling in this campus. Uh, some of the uh, teachers sitting here don't know how uh, that uh, we I think we had a very good time on this campus doing lots of things. So with that, uh, uh, so, uh, so I'm going to give a somewhat informal discussion given the size of the audience. I'm not going to keep it very formal. We can also share a little bit about uh, the personal aspects as well. That is my um, career journey and so on. Do we have to stream this? Are people watching because of, uh, I mean, it's, I can't see anybody over here. Yes, please. Yes. Sorry about that. Uh, I would like to see the people I'm talking to. Okay, I think uh, the settings look uh, much better now. So let's uh, move on. Um, so let me begin with uh, my journey uh, over the last few years, uh, which helps us, uh, uh, which helps me actually articulate what is the motivation for having this kind of a conversation and why I am in the field of marketing and. Uh, despite a lot of reservations, I continue to be in this field and have uh, positive expectations from this field. So let me give a little bit of background. So of course, it starts with uh, this college itself. So I uh, joined here like any other student, uh, did not know what much to do, took up engineering because most of us took engineering at that time, those who did not get medicine or were not qualified. We all took engineering, came here, not very, I mean, quite directionless. And uh, so there, there was a lot of opportunity to do different things because academics was not the only thing here. So that was great and there was not much burden of these other things like uh, MBA coaching or anything like that when we initially came. So it was a very free and easy life. I got a chance to do a lot of uh, creative writing. I used to write and win competitions. It was like a, a continuous path along with academics. And we organized quintessence. It was like a big memory. We still remember the date of quintessence in our group and we circulate photos of our magazine. It was called Semaphore. We wonder at it and we still uh, have very, very sweet memories. And so that was all that. And uh, at some point, I think it was the, the cat coaching companies which came swooping on the campus, conducted these mock cats and Somehow that spirit of MBA got into many of us. In fact, there are there are quite a few MBA graduates in our batch. So that is how the spirit uh, came of wanting to do an MBA, although I had no clue of what an MBA was. And at that time, there was also the option of doing M-Tech. So there, but definitely, I was sure I wanted to do a postgraduate degree. I thought uh, I should study more. So at that point, MTech MBA, this confusion was there for many of us again and so did write the gate exam but at some point, I, uh, somehow this uh, more of technical did not really appeal to me. I thought I want to do something that real people are doing around us. So MBA seemed to be better suited for that. People are doing things, you also engage in that, maybe you manage some people or maybe you um, get to decide something so it seemed like an attractive option although I still did not know what it was and then of course one year went by in coaching and all that and that year did not get because I was one of those who would uh, uh, say that I will join only if I get IIM and that year we only had six IIMs if I'm not wrong so how do you get an IIM so quickly so but it was quite heartbreaking at, at that point even small things can break your heart so that it was yes quite a sad thing but in that period I was able to join a company so I was with Bosch there were six of us it was again a college experience out there 
in fact my biggest memory of bosch is not the lab car and the electronics and embedded circuits my biggest memory is our birthday group we had 20 of us we called ourselves the birthday group and we celebrated each person's birthday so one or two celebrations every month so that that's uh, that's what i took away from bosch but there also this continued that i wanted to do that PA, that mba by that time uh, i had actually figured out that mba this uh, cat it's more of a mental skill if you can be calm on that exam day you can score at least 10 more points so this time i tried that and it actually worked so got all the calls got into ahmedabad and so felt very good about myself top of the world feeling and my first sight when i went to campus was um, the rooms i think our engineering college even the worst room was better than the room i got and in fact that day tears came to my eyes i mean just just uh, yeah because i mean you had fought so much tried so much and you get this this is the room and this is what you came for but, but of course that was just a first impression things changed we again had a nice group of malayalis there we have still we have a whatsapp group it's called spam some people are malus so we had that and it was a very jolly group so that group really anchored that the emotional and the the struggle is that campus life was so again we still have not gotten to marketing but let me still continue so that group uh, we used to go out together that is my memory we used to go for midnight buffets and i was only vegetarian in any case so that that was the emotional side of it campus was a struggle so that is uh, one thing i wanted to uh, uh, share that is we think that an easy life is a good life and there <coughs> so there when you uh, when we went there we were we didn't know what to expect but all i knew that there were about there were around 60 percent were from iit so when all these iit students come they are already into the rhythm because they have that culture of mba and then the it's there's a lot of adjustment needed what i remember is that i used to sit in the third row first time in my life i was not in the first bench because uh, you have seating i mean seating arrangement and the letter p is not front of the alphabet so i was in the third row and it used to be this huge classroom and nobody could hear hear me or any of the other soft spoken people so i learned to shout and that is a skill it's a skill that has actually stayed because when you require you can shout and when you don't you don't so that that is one thing that uh, andhavad really taught me and so again about the struggle part so when we struggle and we fight and we don't give up something it happens i think in our mind or that is what i feel after all these years that struggle actually shapes you for the better so if you're not struggling that means you're not doing enough at this age especially for the youngsters out here so that's find something to struggle with and get started okay so so then but beyond just that it was also there were two other things that happened at that time and that is how i got into this marketing one is that a lot of exposure exposure to the the real world you could say the world outside kerala so there i found out how actually companies interact how people deal with each other how these companies come and they uh, how they conduct their business what is this field of business itself marketing strategy finance what actually happens not a textbook knowledge but you really find out for yourself you immerse in that that was a big big eye opening learning and then summer internship all that in fact summer internship the day uh, before i got placed i was crying because i didn't get placed on the first day it has made zero difference in my life but part of everything so i called home and cried and said that i didn't get placed although i had some 10 interviews so anyway that was that but this exposure really helped shape and now this exposure is available everywhere all you need is internet log into linkedin follow any company any person or who is working in any company and you can pick up everything so you don't need to go anywhere for that exposure now just log into linkedin okay the third thing i am getting to that marketing bit was about self discovery 
so there it is it's a huge period where you find that the world you came from it's not that other world there is some other world out there people interact in a different way expectations are different and for me one fascinating thing was that people were very confident regardless of whether they knew anything they were confident so that was something i puzzled over i also tried to imbibe a little bit so you find that there is a lot of self discovery that happens and for me i was a bit academically oriented i went through this discovery i did some projects independent projects with the faculty there did a lot of other things i was fascinated by marketing so at that point i did not know why just this idea of how companies actually sell their products people go to the shop and buy it people talk about it just the way i mean i did not know that it was a field of study but just the way this happens how these brands actually evoke certain emotions in people all that just just was fascinating for me i knew i wanted to do something there that was my field so it was like it was really fascinating for me and it was the vikram sarabhai library at the indian institute of management and the but that is where i used to find these papers books to understand more of what i saw around so that was that i would say it was like a turning point just understanding and knowing that there is this field that i would like to do something in that's the process of self discovery and i also knew i wanted to be in academia i used to play t- uh, badminton with uh, phd students somehow with the hostels and everything that was very very regular these there were these uh, two three phd students and we used to play and I, so i was very much exposed to the phd life and again i thought yes i do want to do a phd definitely at some point preferably soon after pgp but uh, with pgp also comes placements and when you get placed in a company that pays uh, that pays i would say let me not think of the numbers now so because it's it's just not comparable it's 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 uh, i mean several times of what you would get when you start working as an uh, assistant professor but in you want okay so when i joined i was getting around 20 lakhs a year that was in 2009 and uh, so now easily i think it would be 35 maybe or maybe even more and here i get uh, i think around 1.1 or 2 lakhs a month so that's about 10 lakhs 12 lakhs a year but then there is that trade off so that is the next thing but although i would come to it later that trade off that comes in the choice you have to make so in any case it is very difficult to justify to anybody why you want to let go of that kind of a placement and you want to take up a, a phd phd means that you you don't get anything back for 5 years at least so it's a high low return high risk kind of a uh, kind of a job that you want to do if you're going to phd so i went to this company again i had a i had too good of an experience so went there went met clients talked to people learned different things and it was so consulting has a lot of very very positive aspects including getting to interact with senior people and really learning things with a perspective so that's there is a difference there learning from a book and getting things is one thing but interacting and learning people's perspectives is a different thing so in a way i have tried to bring in my perspective in the later part of this talk so that is how this consulting helped but i was not satisfied we did do market research lots of market research lots of uh, things like mental mapping zaltman metaphor elicitation technique all of these things but it was not uh, deep it was all done in a somewhat shallow way to actually get answers for companies so for me what i was interested was to get some solid answers which would stand the test of time why should we answer each company's problem separately that was the thought so that is why i came back to academia around that time monitor also merged with deloitte to cover monitor so that was a good chance for many of us to introspect what we really wanted to do so campus ahmedabad campus it was like second home to me so i used to go back every year so okay when i went back there was uh, there was no gap actually it was like coming home you you go away for even one year you come back it's the same so back to that old life and 
it was another kind of experience so that is where the story with marketing really begins so again it was a struggle so because now you have to learn new things how to write how to analyze how to collect data everything is new and again that struggle and luckily i got a, a very i would say very supportive very very um, helpful kind of uh, thesis advisor professor advin sahai so under his guidance was really able to uh, i mean i don't know what he would say of me but at least i think i did a good job of uh, doing uh, the phd so and now after phd back to academic life so we we'll look at academic life later on uh, depending on the interest but in any case uh, so let's come to this uh, the topic for today so i wanted to give this personal history because that actually has shaped how all these thoughts that i'm going to present now have come about so starting from a very small uh, city small town actually going to a big city i stayed in bombay delhi both these places used to do a lot of shuttling between these two in fact 4 am wake up and board the flight and go so every week so all these things has happened and at some point you find that okay how do these things actually fit together so for me i have tried to fit together these things with the idea of marketing itself so marketing at the base is really persuasion somebody has to persuade somebody to take something and give some money in return that's the base of marketing so people also say that it is about creating something valuable and then you uh, exchange it for something exchange it for money and so on but you don't even need any product it can even be a idea that you sell so ultimately it's about persuasion so that is marketing but how is it conducted what is this real and ideal form of marketing so when i went in to this field i thought all marketing was ideal so i thought marketing was this great field i was very naive no doubt that people wanted some things companies provided those things people were buying sometimes we are of course unhappy defective product or we don't like the ad but most of the time it's like some nice hand in hand kind of game there are so many brands from our childhood that i like so resna used to be a nice brand what was wrong with resna coca cola yes people like to drink coca cola what was wrong with coca cola so it was a very nice clear and clean world but as i got deeper as i also read up and found out what was happening in the field i found that it's not uh, it's not such an easy simple world because uh, people are unhappy companies are exploiting people they are exploiting resources so just to make these businesses grow too many things are happening so for example our own plachimada in fact i think when i was a uh, uh, undergrad here i had written an article on plachimada for the magazine the college magazine so Uh, so those issues were still there so coca cola is a, such a big company it's known to be the best marketing company ever because ultimately they just have a they just have a brown liquid and the whole world is happily drinking it on top of that it's unhealthy now, these are my views i've held these views for maybe 10 15 years now but of course it sells so they are doing something so where do you draw the line is there any ethics in marketing so pondering over these issues and of course i ponder too much that is why i have done my phd and just uh, think too much but in any case ponder, pondering over these issues i to me it i seem like there is this real marketing there is this ideal marketing and somehow my eyes are on the ideal but the world is real so there is this uh, clash and i think it's a fun space to be because there are these two ideas and there is this tension between them can we shift real marketing towards better marketing make it better so let's look at this in uh, different ways now of course whatever i'm going to say is going to be very very uh, limited in the sense it's not going to be exhaustive by any means for whatever is happening in the world it is also going to be partial in the sense it's based on my understanding my view or insight into whatever i have seen so these are just examples and for all i know maybe the views have to be revised after some time as well so but at this point uh, it's, it's it's always good to share and test our views so coming to this um, so i have lost track of time how much time do i have 
How much time more is there? How many minutes? Other one slice. So what? Acha. Okay, I can take maybe. Okay, no worries. Okay, sure, sure. Because we started with the difference. Okay. So in uh, or maybe when all the audience gets uh, very sleepy, I can stop. I don't. I'm used to it. I mean, our PhD student. I mean, our PGP students do sleep. So first thing I, I want to touch upon is practice. There are three things within marketing that I look at. One is practice. One is uh, the research and academia, that the field of research and academia, which is slightly different from practice. Practice is the marketing we see all around us, our Coca-Cola. And the third one is about the teaching. So I, I'm looking at this field in three ways. So the first and the biggest one is actually our practice, because unlike many researchers, marketing as a field it started with practice. academia is only catching up so marketing companies have been innovating and doing a lot of marketing already and the journals have been trying to understand this in an academic fashion put some structure to it put some system to it over time so what so we start with practice what are the different activities these uh, that companies engage in and how do these activities actually tie back to our topic of uh, real and ideal what is going on in this uh, the the field of marketing so within practice let us first look at psychology so marketing again the field of practice and in general marketing we can think of this or this is at least how i think of it we can think of it as three components i don't think this is a framework or anything available anywhere but this is how i find it very intuitive to put these three together that is the psychology of marketing which is about consumers and how they engage with brands how they really process their thoughts that is the first aspect the second aspect is about technology technology is about analytics the products that are created all the aspects that involve technology nowadays of course augmented reality virtual reality all these things metaverse everything involves a lot of technology but these are having an interface psychology and technology the third one is strategy so strategy is basically how companies take their decisions how they decide which let us say which market to go for or which brand to sell or where to start the shops the, locate the shops so all of this is the strategy so we can think of uh, the field of marketing as consisting of these three that is there is the strategy where companies take decisions there is the consumers whose psychology is actually impacting impacted by these decisions and the third is technology which plays uh, too much of a role and it's a very strong role these days starting from social media to ai to everything else so these three elements actually give us a way to look at what's happening in marketing now when we look at uh, the psychology aspect the the top of mind point for me is brands brands are very much present everywhere nowadays if you want to drink tender coconut water it comes in a branded bottle it does not come in the coconut anymore in fact uh, id id mawa some of you might be familiar id fresh so they are considering uh, selling ground coconut that is a scraped coconut but inside the coconut shell so next time you buy a coconut it will be a coconut but when you open it this way of opening it it seems inside there will be you don't have to scrape it just uh, take it so these are the things that are coming so what are the ch these changes actually doing to the psychology so different brands are doing different things and one thing that stands out is uh, if we are uh, if we are looking at the the discourse that is the the media the newspapers the social media all of that around us we find that brands actually have a voice nowadays many brands are saying things they are taking a position on things especially in the western market and beginning here as well brands actually say that uh, we we uh, think in this manner we support this cause we oppose this government brands actually take a stance as if they are entities so for example some of you might be familiar we also look at other examples there is a nike at some point i believe it was 2017 nike actually took up uh, the sponsorship i mean took up as a brand ambassador this person the sports person colin kepernick he has actually in a way i mean according to the um, 
to the, um, the government and the authorities. He had insulted the national anthem by bending on his knee while the anthem was being played in the sports arena. But he was doing that in support of a certain set of issues. So Nike decided to support him, although he was seen like an outcast. Now this brand Nike, what does it mean? So brand is taking a stand saying that we as a brand support this person. So another example is um, this, this lady, she was, I mean, this happened in Canada. She was reading the news. She has had been this news in this domain for 35 years. And she came with her hair gray, did not dye her hair one day. She was told to leave the company by her manager. She was uh, dismissed. This created a big issue in Canada, did not come over here, but Dow, our shampoo brand, so Dow said that we will go grey. So we will, they had this hashtag, keep the grey, and they said that we all, all our ads will become grey for some time. Some other brands also supported this by greying out their logos. So these are things brands are doing to say that we have a voice in social issues. So currently I'm studying some of this using the brand as intentional agent framework. So brand is an agent, it has intentions. So can we think of a brand as just a label on a product? So brand is do much more. It is shaping social media conversations. Think of Maggie. So when Maggie the, the, I mean, was in a problem whereby her lead was found in the product, Maggie decided to take all the products off the shelf. Because they, they did not want to sell that product anymore. According to Maggie, there is no real issue in their product. But how do you prove it? It's difficult to prove that when we have very, very different kind of legislations, approaches in the different states. So across the country, you cannot really easily prove. So what do you do? You take the call. It's a very serious call to remove all the Maggie everywhere. And But something very nice happened with that. People started posting social media messages saying, I, I miss you, Maggie. Please come back, Maggie. We love you, Maggie. So this was the kind. So if, if you people have missed those, then you have really missed something. It was a wave around that time. Well, I believe it was 2018, 17, 18, around that time. So please go back and see this. Miss you, Maggie, and you will find thousands of messages. Not thousands, uh, more than that. So in any case, so Maggie realized its brand value. It's the attachment that people have. So we call this brand attachment. People actually have that attachment towards the brand. And these are all going into our psychology. It's actually there in people's minds. So wake up, find that there is nothing to eat, put a Maggie to boil. It's an automatic thing that we do. Without the Maggie, you cannot live. So for that, you need to go and stay in some of the hostels. I'm not sure uh, how much uh, you experience it, but not that it's something to be proud of, but it is there. So these are the things that brands are doing. And it is, it is much more. And then, of course, Maggie came back with a rebound. So Yippie and Foodle thought that at that time they could just uh, pick up. Nothing happened. Maggie was back with a bounce. So this is what happens to people's psychology. Over time, there are some favorite brands. There are things that brands do. Everything goes into people's psychology. Nowadays, social media has facilitated this much more. So everything that happens is up on social media. People can like and click and share and forward. So it, it's like a wave if you're active. Not that you people should be. If you're not so active on social media, please continue to do that. But if you're there, then you will realize that there are these waves of... Uh, activities that happen on social media with regard to brands and as a result people's choices are being modified people's uh, thoughts are being modified so people have this feeling of uh, missing out fear of missing out so it's called FOMO sometimes the new jargon for that so all these things uh, are affecting the psychology there are some negative sides also to social media it goes without saying that is the way it influences people. If time permits, we'll talk about it. In any case, consumers' behaviors are being changed. And similarly, if we go into any online shopping portal, there is a wide array of choice. So much choice that we actually find it difficult to choose sometimes. If you decide to buy something like a t-shirt, you keep scrolling. And you're, you're happy scrolling, but you're never happy with the product. So this kind of a trend is also there and companies are grappling with this. That's also one of the research uh, pieces of research that I'm trying to uh, trying to address. 
so in any case uh, these issues are all there our lives has it been made easier or worse it's not very clear so that tension remains so ideally marketing should continue to make our lives easier but it is actually probably also causing some problems as we call a choice overload the second aspect so this was on psychology the next aspect is that of strategy that is how do companies uh, make their decisions the first thing in that would be that there are several new business models itself the way of operating has changed so if we think of something like airbnb airbnb is basically this uh, collection of home stays so people can put up their home stay on this airbnb website and so there is a huge aggregation of such homes and people can book those rooms and go and stay there so it's like a make my trip for hotels except that these are home stays so it's a completely new model because airbnb does not spend anything on the houses or on the customers it is present as an intermediary now it offers a lot of variety because you can choose between which house you want to stay so that's uh, something this company is able to do it's a new business model the second thing that comes up in strategy is that of startups a lot of startups these days tech startups even otherwise and if if we uh, if we are aware it would be a very interesting thing to know that india is bubbling with startups actually these days much more so than in the west we have this young population we have this growing market we have these uh, students or young graduates who want to make a mark so it is really fueling that system and of course we have people with money the investors so there is this huge startup ecosystem recently there has been a downturn but it is uh, still continuing to grow and the third thing is on ethics so we have touched upon that earlier also marketing ethics is is huge social media has led to things like body shaming women being uncomfortable with their own body trying to become thinner all sorts of uh, unhealthy expectations from them so that's what social media has done ai and data leads to questions of data privacy so i check for a passport cover as i was mentioning check for a passport cover oh, no i just read a story on a passport cover on whatsapp a link had come and next day my amazon page or one of those pages is full of passport covers so these are the things that happen it sounds creepy so it's happening but of course companies are trying to and of course europe is very much at the forefront of these data privacy regulations and third is in a way we have touched upon it that is technology so in technology again lots and lots of things have happened one aspect is that of increasing availability of data so yes we discussed that there are these data privacy issues but before that these issues came up only because companies have been trying to personalize so when you go on to the site you find recommendations which are personalized to you you buy one product on amazon you get three four recommendations those are happening because your data is being shared so personalization can be done it's a good outcome but at the same time this data privacy concern remains and there are also issues with data availability so i was in this uh, conversation with uh, in a session with this uh, pharma company employees uh, senior management middle to senior management yesterday and there was a discussion on how the prescription dependence in india is actually very low so it was something new for me as well that is when a doctor writes a prescription people go and buy medicines that is prescription dependence but what about that huge sea of people who neither have a prescription or who don't see a doctor even if the doctor gives a prescription don't buy that medicine but buy something else or people who self medicate all that other set of people now india is so huge that you can only estimate what is the percentage of uh, uh, the prescription dependence so that's where there is a huge lack of data and it is uh, very clear that going forward the companies which can close these uh, data gaps the gaps where there is a there is just no data available because it's it's in the rural areas it's in the lower tier urban areas it's not with the metros and tier 1s and tier 2s so where is this data what are these people doing so nobody knows so that is one data gap to be and uh, it's a place like i think a place like this this place that we have around here this it, it would qualify for that so if somebody wants to set up a shop here it's going to be what will you sell because you have no data around you 
so that is on the technology aspect so i did prepare uh, a little more on uh, the academia aspects but uh, okay let me continue in any case for the uh, people okay so what we have seen now is a, a quick overview of what is happening in the field of practice that is how marketers actually engage in marketing and we find that there are a lot of good things happening out of marketing uh, but at the same time people are also struggling there are negative that come out of marketing so given these there is a right place for research and academia to figure out what are the good practices or the right practices i guess there is no good or bad it's only about whether it is useful for society or not so where does academia actually fit and in that one aspect is of, about doing this research engaging with companies and publishing that research so that other companies can benefit but the bottleneck is usually that uh, it's difficult to transfer knowledge from academia to industry from industry to academia is also difficult but it can be done because academics anyway are in search of knowledge but from academia to industry there is always the issue that in industry the the time horizon is actually much shorter so applying insights and taking the time to process those insights and doing something which will help the company for the next 5 years is not does not happen always by the time probably the manager would change anyway so these are some of the issues with respect to academia and industry so that's again where we see in an ideal world all the insights from research should go into the industry but that does not happen the next aspect is about which issues get discussed in research and there the uh, the research that i do with respect to gold is uh, relevant so india is a huge consumer of gold it's a huge importer as well so um in so but there's hardly any idea really of granular knowledge of what is happening in india with respect to gold we all wear gold but who buys it what do we buy it for how can we enhance the customer's experience it's hardly researched so that is one thing uh, that i take an interest in but who who will publish this research that is also an issue so that's one issue where i mean not all issues that we study can be uh, published in academia because academy as a social pro process the field decides what gets published so that's again a tension to navigate so um, let me try and close uh, my words so so what i have tried to look at is the field of marketing how can we think of it as there is this ideal world and there is this real world so the real world has several issues where mainly because of the contingencies that are actually there in the world the time horizon and all, and the availability of resources all of that but in the ideal world we would be doing marketing which is uh, much better so that it is better for a society better for the consumers it respects the consumers and treats them as people uh, so these are the um, what would make it better marketing and ideal marketing so i hope i have been able to convey uh something to uh, all of you because these are some thoughts that i uh, that i have been i have been developing over over time which are at a very high level big issues uh, not not getting discussed much but yeah so i'm glad that i could have a forum to share this and would happily welcome any thoughts any feedback anything on this thank you Now, the stage is open for discussion. Anyone who wants to share their thoughts or ask any questions, uh, they're welcome. What are the roles of these marketing research companies in this deciding process? There are several marketing research companies that may say this is a good idea. Uh, can you tell something about that too? Uh, marketing. 
something research is um, slightly different from the research that we talked about here. That is, uh, marketing research is about collecting data about consumers. Suppose uh, you, are, uh, you are doing a research on behalf of doubt. You want to find out what kind of uh, ingredients of shampoo is good for people in a particular region, let's say people who uh, have hard water coming from their tax. So in that case, you can do some research, find out what are the problems that those consumers are facing. And so uh, you can actually find out those problems. That is done through market research. It can be done through survey, questionnaire, focus group discussion. Many techniques are there. You can also even analyze social media data. And with that, get some understanding of the consumers. That is market research. Yes, uh, that because you are trying to understand the uh, what happens to gold, what makes you to the body gold. Such an analysis, how do you ensure that the data that you are collecting is correct or not? Because it will be highly dependent on, uh, it will be dependent on many factors, including time. So, so as such, all market research data is a problem. So I think good quality data is an issue. But specifically with regard to gold, there is also an issue that people don't want to disclose. So that issue is there always. And the way to overcome is to come up with other kinds of estimates so that you know that this is the percentage by which people overestimate or underestimate. That is one method. This is all in the social psychology piece, consumer research. And similarly, if you collect data in the online space, there could be a lack of quality because many could be uh, uh, the invalid data. People could be putting uh, irrelevant things, and sometimes that comes. So uh, there are many issues. Usually, we provide some procedures beforehand, before collecting the data, to understand how we want to treat that data or uh, change the estimates or that. At the same time, in the industry, when we apply this to industry, that 90% accuracy is neither needed nor it is possible. So there is some lack of accuracy is going to be there, which is my understanding. When we face the consumer tolerance of the makers in a market setting, they are being more and more important now, big business. Consumer components of consumer groups, uh, activist groups, that is one side, and regulators are actually different. By regulators, we mean the consumer code or other FSFAI, all these uh, who regulate the products or the processes. That, that is regulation. And they, of course, enforce it top down. The regulations are there, uh, they are already created. Some are being created and they are enforced. But when we talk about consumer and activist groups or uh, consumer forums, those are those have been there, those have always been there, and companies have to be, um, if they have a strong voice, then companies do have to be careful. So many brands have faced, especially big brands, so brands like Starbucks have faced these uh, issues of consumers being activists. So in that's why what happens and we talk about from Coca-Cola's perspective as consumer activists. And both sides are justified. For us, of course, um, uh, if we are from that place, it looks like Coca-Cola is in the wrong. But for them, they are just trying to run a business and make money. And nothing is wrong with making money according to the package philosophy. So how do we balance these two? So there is no set answer, but we have to be able to negotiate it. One thing is great that is now these companies are trying to be more sustainable. So they are trying to engage communities with environment, all that in a more sustainable fashion. So it is great to see you here, uh, like, uh, especially to listen to someone who has both academy and industry exposure from this very great. And how you visualize your navigation from the industry side to the academy. Uh, more 
this uh, conversation that you may uh, also to the startup or sector in the world. Absolutely. So I understand that uh, what you are speaking is regarding uh, I'm doing your specific research in Okay, we have tried to answer that. So uh, at my point on, we have this uh, line, a line which is I think laboratory for innovation, venture, and education and entrepreneurship. So that's uh, like the integration that we have here. And uh, so that, that's not very old in the five, six years old. But uh, it has been doing a lot of work in collaboration with different agencies uh, in the organizations in the South, maybe. And so recently I was part of a panel where we helped evaluate and select startups for coaching Shibuya. They have a integration program for Marani startups, and they startups. And similarly, they have different programs, they also select and integrate startups. So I think there is a new program with allow to start. Uh, where they integrate and fund some startups. Moving on. Other than that, I'm not speaking about one of these uh, regional uh, <coughs> regional uh, innovation uh, startup forums to give them some uh, knowledge sharing. So, what do you think is going to happen? The startup ecosystem is very vibrant, so anyone who wants to contribute can actually share something. It's very vibrant. Thank you, ma'am. It was a very insightful and it was an odd question to have you here. Uh, so, I have an open plan. I would like to invite Dr. Emma Sinner. Uh, so, we can have a chance to come and listen to Dr. Emma Sinner. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Good afternoon. First of all, thank uh, Dr. Priya Narayan uh, for accepting your invitation and trying to deliver a strong graph of value. So, actually, when we started thinking this year's uh, lecture series, we had several names coming. We had a discussion in the department, and actually, this department is uh, arranging this lecture and the research. When we saw uh, Priya's name and her um, profile, we had uh, we didn't have any uh, confusion. We, we thought that we can have her. So she is a 2008 pass out from DC department. So I thank Dr. Priya for coming out here and being a wonderful and insightful lecture on marketing. And on behalf of the uh, Department of Advanced Communication Team and Government Engineering College Tishur, thank um, Gloria Gopi Kumar for handling for arranging this kind of uh, wonderful lecture for students here, faculty here, and probably all around the world who are, want to see what is happening in DC. So I thank. Um, in my all afternoon. Now we thank our principal, Dr. Benjiji Patrick, she couldn't come here. Uh, she has uh, arranged our facilities for us. And I thank um, alumni secretary, uh, Dr. Naushita, and all other alumni who have come here to attend this. Uh, I also thank uh, Shaki. She has um, given an insight into uh, the college days and uh, working um, days of uh, Gloria Kofi. Uh, and I thank all who are assembled here and those who are online for attending this lecture. And these lectures are available in YouTube. You can meet later also. I thank everyone. 
thanks Cynthia for the for streaming this uh, lecture. Thank you, Vanessa. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone who are present here. Thank you and have a nice day.